Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to a new video. As of 2020, roughly 3% of all the cars in the world are electrified. Now when I say electrified, it doesn't mean that the cars only contain a battery pack. It means that it can also have a hybrid configuration, which means there can be an engine on board. So though only 3% of the cars are electrified, you can actually see that pretty much every company out there is talking about you know creating its own fleet of electric vehicles so if you figure out the reason why they are doing it it typically boils down to couple of things the first thing is efficiency the second point is emissions i think emissions is something that we can all relate to you know i'm pretty sure you would have seen someone drive a car which emits a lot of smoke correct and when you have a whole bunch of these types of cars it can cause major damage right and that is one of the immediate reasons for you know thinking about electric vehicles but usually that's not the whole point if you take a look at electric vehicles they are not actually zero emissions why is that well if you perform a full energy analysis and if you basically look at the origin of the energy that drives the electric vehicles you can see that it comes from a coal power plant or some other power plant right so that also has to be taken into account into the emission calculations but usually you know controlling emissions in a thermal power plant that's far away from a city is much easier and can be regulated uh, much more carefully than say the cars that you or I drive right so uh, I think that is one point where a lot of people argue but you can see that as more renewable energy sources are uh, being uh, tapped to generate electricity that argument slowly starts to fade away uh, the second point is efficiency which is definitely a no-brainer you will actually be seeing in this lesson that IC engines actually waste a lot of energy in terms of heat though these devices have been around for close to 100 years it's very hard to basically tap the energy that basically goes off in your exhaust right in fact that's where the majority chunk of energy is being lost okay so essentially in this particular lecture we will be diving deep into these two specific topics right efficiency and emissions and uh, uh, hopefully with data i will make you the judge you decide uh, which is better ic engines or electric vehicles all right so let's get started so before we jump on to this lesson i wanted to give you a quick refresh of the learning aids so different symbols are used across the lectures and they mean uh, different things. The things that you have to specifically focus on is this symbol. Whenever you see this symbol, that's a topic of focus. And uh, if you are taking this course seriously, then you should definitely consider solving the challenges that are provided in this particular course so that you remember those concepts. And similarly, we use a black box for things that we really don't want to dive deep on. So learning objectives, right? So at the end of this particular video, you will be able to understand the need for electric vehicles. And as I mentioned before, we will basically look at this entire thing from an efficiency viewpoint and also from a emissions viewpoint. So once we have done that, we'll talk about how the energy for propulsion originates. Once we have talked about that, we'll try to understand the different emissions that have to be regulated. And then finally, we will talk about emission regulations and what it actually means. And for that, we will be taking up the Euro 4 standard. So first, let's take a look at the energy chain. As I mentioned, you have this symbol here. So it's very important to kind of understand this entire concept. You know, feel free to take notes and make sure that by the end of this lecture, you remember this flowchart. It's fairly easy but it's very useful if you actually remember it. So on the left hand side, we basically look at uh, where the energy comes for electric vehicles. So that's why I've colored all the boxes in blue in color to kind of signify that blue stands for electric vehicles. And on the right hand side, we basically look at the energy chart for IC engine vehicles. So let's start with electric vehicles. So as of today, most of the electricity that's produced, at least in India, comes from coal based thermal power plant. Right? So you take coal, you basically burn it in a thermal power plant and then that energy is used to boil water which is then used to run a turbine and energy is extracted. So you essentially produce a whole bunch of emissions at the thermal power plant and usually there are several after treatment systems that are placed inside the thermal power plant to take care of these emissions. Then the electricity has to flow from the thermal power plant via the electric grid 
to your home and usually there are losses in this process and finally at your home if you have a compatible charger a wall mounted charger you will be able to charge the battery of your electric vehicle and essentially when you look at efficiency there is a narrow way to look at it and there is a broad way to look at it the narrow way to do that is to basically look at hey what percentage of the energy that is stored in my batteries is converted to power at the wheels right so that's a narrow way of defining efficiency and if you want to be really broad and thorough you have to kind of look at the efficiency in terms of the starting point right so how much heat or what's the calorific value of coal and essentially when you burn a kg of coal you get some amount of energy correct what percentage of that energy is at the end of the day available at the wheels of your electric vehicle that requires a large amount of data and you need to be really thorough about it now as students of engineering you should focus on getting that information from a literature review if there is a review paper that has been uh, published in a respectable journal then that's your starting point now in terms of fossil fuels again uh, now in terms of ic engines the process is again easy to understand you start with fossil fuels there is an oil refinery which converts Uh, your crude oil into gasoline this gasoline is then transported to your local gas stations again i don't think there is too much loss in that process if there is any loss that's usually loss in terms of vapor but then once the fuel is actually in your car there are significant sources that basically results in loss of heat in your ic engine and at the end of the day the power that's available is very less so when we basically look at the narrow definition of ic engines so i strongly believe is the only thing that young engineers should care about you will actually see that electric vehicle is definitely the winner so here what i have done is i have basically tabulated the losses that typically occur in an electric vehicle and we are first looking at a scenario where the electric vehicle is being operated without regenerative braking for those of you who do not know what regenerative braking is it's a simple concept when uh, your car is actually going down a slope uh, you don't have to spend power right in fact you're most likely braking and during this scenario the electric motor can actually act as a generator and can recover some of the energy and put it back in the battery right that's what regenerative braking is but please keep in mind that here we are looking at a scenario where regenerative braking is not taken into account and also If you are interested in learning the exact conditions at which this data has been taken you should basically visit the website that's actually listed in the bottom right fueleconomy.gov now the other thing that you should remember is that these tests are performed at standard conditions standard pressures and standard temperatures right and that can actually be beneficial for electric vehicles and I'll kind of explain about that when I'm discussing all these numbers So if you take a look at the loss the primary loss that an electric vehicle encounters is the loss via the electric drive system so this includes your losses in electric motor right now that accounts to 20% of the total energy that's actually available in the first place the second thing is charging uh, you will actually later learn that during the process of charging there is a large amount of energy that gets wasted so when you try to charge the battery and say that through your charger 100% flows in the 100% energy is not going to make it into the battery some amount of that energy is going to be wasted in terms of heat the other thing is accessory loss your electric vehicles have a lot of devices that have to be powered by other battery great example for that is say the heater that's there in a typical car if you are living in a cold region that you cannot go without an heater right now in ic engine cars that process is actually made very efficient once your car warms up a little bit the heat that is required to keep the cabin at a good temperature can be taken from the exhaust but in electric vehicles you don't have exhaust gases so any heat that has to be generated to keep the cabin at a comfortable temperature has to come from batteries now if you own a car and if you drive a car in a place like wisconsin or somewhere in canada then things can go really really cold and your accessory loss can go up to 20 or even 30% right now remember all of these things are actually worsened with the age of the battery all right so that is why it is very important to understand that this table provides data which was measured at a specific condition and 
if you're really interested you should check out fueleconomy.gov to understand protocols that are followed while testing all right so that being said if you take a look at the same electric vehicle with regenerative braking you get an additional 17 percent gain from regenerative braking which makes the total power available to wheels to 79 percent so only 21 percent is lost right so in the previous case we had 62 percent which is still good now if you compare this with ic engines you can actually see that the power available to wheels is just 12 percent right and this is primarily because in your engine the losses are generally around 70 percent now when we say losses at the engine it can be a bit misleading combustion is a very efficient process and you will see that most of the engines have 95 to 98 percent combustion efficiency the problem is heat transfer a tremendous amount of heat is actually lost via heat transfer via your exhaust gas right and that is why ic engines are unfortunately not that efficient everything else drivetrain loss parasitic loss idle loss accessory loss they are very comparable to an electric vehicle the key problem is the loss via heat which basically does not play well for the ic engines now again as i said previously an ic engine car in a region say like texas might be more efficient than an electric vehicle that's being driven in Wisconsin during winters right and that is why you need to understand the standards and test protocols that are followed by generating this data so I hope at this point you kind of understand why electric vehicles are generally the winner from an efficiency viewpoint now from an emission standpoint on-road emissions for an electric vehicle are typically zero right now if you are having a hybrid electric vehicle then yes emissions from that engine that the vehicle carries do contribute towards the total emissions but if it's a hundred percent electric vehicle often also called as the battery electric vehicles your on-road tailpipe emissions are essentially zero all right yeah i think that's the accurate way of saying it tailpipe emissions are zero now when we say emissions we talk about soot we talk about oxides of nitrogen hc hydrocarbons carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide now we all know that emissions are bad gases like carbon dioxide are greenhouse gases and they contribute to global warming in addition to this emissions can also cause poor air quality index if you're interested in knowing more about air quality index i strongly recommend you to check out the website airquality.gov i believe it's called uh, aqinow.gov if i'm wrong you just google it you will find the information is the first link but essentially air quality index data looks at all of these key emissions in several major cities across the world and it basically tells you what's the permissible amount so now that we have talked about emissions and why emissions are bad it's very important to understand how emissions are measured now there are several standards which are used to measure emissions you have lab tests you have on-road tests which basically measure the emissions as the vehicle is driving in realistic conditions usually emissions are measured in kg per kilometer or kg per mile right so essentially how much kg of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide is produced for each and every kilometer at a particular speed you can also look at emissions in terms of the power produced so kg per kilowatt is also a commonly followed unit you can also look at the amount of emissions produced per kg of fuel consumed that's also followed sometimes all right so now that we've talked about it let's look at what an emission regulation looks like emission regulation essentially dictates automotive companies to make sure that their tailpipe emissions are kept to a desired amount so if you look at 1991 right you can see that there was a regulation on carbon monoxide right but there was no regulation on uh, nox hc plus nox right and you can basically see that the amount of carbon monoxide that your engine was allowed to generate was roughly 14.3 to 27.1 kg per kilometer now this is a lot when compared to what euro 4 permits right and you can see that as years progressed these emission regulations have become more tight and as we are approaching 2020 in india we are basically opting euro 6 and you can see that reducing the emissions further is definitely a challenge it's not an unsolvable problem but it is not an easy problem to solve why as they always say right uh, you basically when you try to optimize something you first 
uh, pick your low hanging fruit and then to move the needle from 95% optimization to 99% optimization you spend a lot of time and money and that's kind of what has happened to ic engines we are at a point where in order to achieve say significant improvements in ic engine combustion or heat recovery the amount of money that has to be spent in terms of r&d is crazy high and that is one of the reasons why companies prefer going electric i'm not saying that that's the only reason that's also one of the reasons so going electric gives automotive companies an easy option to battle emission regulations all right so with that i would like to conclude this video i hope through this video you learned a little bit about the difference in efficiency between electric vehicles and ic engine vehicles and you also learned about the different types of emissions why they are bad and how they are regulated and uh, hopefully by looking at the euro 4 emissions you understood how emission regulations are framed and what are the targets that are given to companies and how these targets have changed over the last several years with that i would like to conclude this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye